Good evening. Uh, welcome you to the uh, regular meeting of the Stillwater Planning Commission of February 20th, 2018. Call this meeting to order. Our first item for business is land use item for discussion and possible action, Baptist Collegiate Ministry. Map Amendment, MA 18-01. Requesting review and approval of a map amendment to rezone property addressed as 810 North Lincoln Street from RT Residential 1 and 2 Family to RTM Residential 2 Family and Multi-Family. Staff presentation. Good evening. Lance Gross with Development Services. The map amendment before you tonight is located at 810 North Husband. The applicant requests to rezone the property from RT Residential 1 and 2 Family District to RTM Residential 2 and Multifamily District. The purple boundary on the map shows the subject site. The zoning to the north is RT. The, um, the zoning to the east and also to the south is also RTM. And to the west is U University. This is a street view uh, showing the, the subject site looking directly to the, to the west. And you can see it's currently being used as a duplex. Findings, uh, the rezoning is compatible with design, if designated to fit neighborhood scale. RTM is located to the south and to the east. The Baptist Student Union is proposed to be located east of the subject property. A parking lot is proposed on the subject site. However, a parking lot is not permitted within the RTM district, um, which, is, which will be worked out at a later date. Any, any questions? Um, two, one, yes. I, is it located on Lincoln Street? You said you said on husband, oh. but I believe it's the, Lincoln. It's Lincoln. You also said that, husband. It's, that is correct. It is, okay. it is Lincoln. It's Lincoln. Yes. Okay. Yes. Apologize for that. And then the second question was if the RTM, if the parking lots aren't allowed in RTM, then why the switch to R, I mean, if it's not allowed on one or the other, why switch to one that it's not? It doesn't help it. Well, we've discussed that with the applicant, okay. and we've decided to allow the applicant's engineer to to address that that, okay. uh, that question. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Any other questions? No. All right. We'll open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the item, please step <laughs> forward. Give your name and address for the record. Stephen Ghost with Ghost and Associates, 113 East 8th, here on behalf of the applicant. Um, Asking for the RTM zoning, it seems consistent with the surrounding zoning. The a church is a use allowed in the RTM. The parking, we had up until Friday, we thought <coughs> the parking would be allowed based on the use across the street and the parking being part of an overall development. So that was our intent. The parking lot's not a standalone parking lot for rent for sale. It's to support the use that will be across the street and under common ownership. Um, so talking to our, our client that we'd have to go to an RMI zoning, which is the next zoning up to allow a, a standalone parking lot. And that doesn't comply with the C3 plan. Seemed like it'd be a lot harder discussion because that would be true spot zoning to get that allowed. So again, until Friday, we thought the parking lot was going to work. Uh, we found out it didn't. So I've met with Tom and Lance to talk through ways to try to address this. And assuming we get the zoning changed to RTM, we'll work on how we're going to get the parking lot figured out. So if there's any questions on anything else, I can answer. Them. I can try to answer. Them. No more questions. No Thank question. You. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of the item, please step forward. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the item, please step forward and give your name and address for the record. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and ask for staff's alternatives. Your first alternative would be to accept findings and, re and recommend that the city council approve the request as presented. 
find that the request is not an appropriate use for the property based upon the impacts of the surrounding vicinity and do not recommend that the city council approve the request. Find that, find that additional information or discussion is needed prior to making a recommendation and table the request to a certain date. Any final questions or additional questions for staff? All right, thank you very much. Discussion. Well, I, I mean, obviously with, with RTM adjacent around it, I don't have a big problem with it going RTM. You know, even though maybe a parking lot isn't allowed, I guess that's really not for us to say. It's only whether to rezone it. And it seems to make sense with RTM. So okay. I'm definitely for it. Except, I'll move to accept fines and recommend the city council approve the proposed map amendment as presented. I'll second that. It has been moved and seconded to accept uh, staff findings and approve recommend, recommended. Vote. Hope. The motion passes four to zero. The next item for um, the next item is plans, policy, ordinances for discussion and possible action. A city of Stillwater text amendment. TXT 18-01, requesting review and approval of a text amendment to Chapter 23, Land Development Code, Article 25, Corridor Redevelopment Area Planning District, and Appendix 1, Form-Based Codes, to add new sections regarding public realm requirement triggers and public realm requirement exemptions. Staff, hello. Good evening, Paula Dennison with Development Services. I don't have a PowerPoint before you this evening, but this is a pretty simple. It's been a while since we've had a text amendment, and this is just a change to the code that we have um, adopted here within the city of Stillwater. What this proposal does is when the corridor redevelopment plan was adopted for the area that form-based code was developed and applied to, um, it had certain requirements for public realm improvements, the improvements off of private property, um, typically found within the right of way. And those improvements can be the actual street itself, parking, landscaping, storm drainage, um, bike lanes or tracks, um, lighting, art, those type of requirements in the public space um, within the right of way. What has happened since the adoption of the um, corridor redevelopment area and the form-based code is that it seems that those requirements in some instances have been more prohibitive to redevelopment and revitalization of certain types of properties than permissive or encouraging for that redevelopment and that revitalization which was the overall intent for the corridor redevelopment plan and the form-based code, was that here's a great opportunity for reinvestment in this area of town. So we sought direction from city council a little while back, and they um, provided staff with some general guidance. Staff got together and took that guidance to actually craft a code amendment and it is what you have before you this evening in ordinance form. So what it does is it does specifically identify any triggers where those public realm improvements are required. It also identifies the exemption from those public realm improvement requirements. And that is, is um, coming from the general direction that city council provided to us. Um, we met also not just the development services staff, but we brought in the transportation and stormwater manager and talked with him through this because this affects his streets and his parking and his sidewalk that is covered under, under his um, function in city government. And he agreed with the proposal that you have before you this evening. So it does establish the triggers and it establishes the exemptions. So you're looking at two different ways of, of coming at this amendment to this area. So right quickly, the findings. Development and redevelopment opportunities are encouraged within the corridor redevelopment area. Certain city code requirements obligate all developers to make improvements to the public realm. In some circumstances, such public realm requirements are seen as financially prohibitive to development or redevelopment. 
The proposed language identifies development that triggers the public realm improvement requirements and identifies exemptions to the public realm improvement requirements. And the proposed language will further encourage development and redevelopment in the corridor redevelopment area. And I will note that um, before we took this to city council for their general guidance, we actually had a citizen in Stillwater write a letter asking if there were anything that the city staff, city code, planning commission, city council could do to allow some of the redevelopment that he wanted to do without having this obligation. Because the obligation, he had costed it out, the obligation was gonna run about two and a half times what just his development was. So that's where the prohibitiveness of this came into play. So um, there is interest in redeveloping in this area. It's just that we need to help pave the way for that. Be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, just briefly, yes. if you don't mind, Paula, you might just give a, a brief overview of the general area we're talking about for those that might not know. Oh, absolutely, yes. This is generally 6th Avenue north to Hall of Fame and Main on the east side west to just past Washington Street. So it's a pretty big area that this covers. Pretty big. We just tell folks it's the south and east side immediately adjacent to campus. Okay, thank Bear you. descriptor. Sir. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Are these, are these that when you came up with this ordinance, are these sort of a general, um, generally accepted uh, things, or did you, you know, eat, did you put each of these together? That is, did you, did this, was this something that came from a form base, a book of form base saying, this is something that happens regularly. Here's some, here's generally how, is this a generally approved accommodations or is this something that y'all sat around the table and decided we think this will be good and this will be good and this will be good? We, we sat around the table. Okay. <laughs> is is, is really what happened. Um, typically, form-based codes have the regulation, but they also have a financing part um, for to cover any of the obligations within that public realm area. When the city's form-based codes were adopted, that financing part was not a component and has yet to become a component of it. So without that piece in there, it's not a true form-based code document. The, the zoning regulatory part of it is, but then that little piece is missing. So this sort of bridges that gap. Anything else? No? Okay. Thank you very much. We'll now open the uh, public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the item, please step forward, give your name and address for the record. Stephen Ghost, 1119 East Connell. I always have to remember another address for these. Um, I'm, this looks good in general. I had a couple questions that I was able to talk to Tom and Lance about, and I don't know if they need clarification within here or not, but um, where it talks about complying with the sidewalk and landscape requirements, my only concern there is if the existing street curb doesn't align with the proposed street sections how do we deal with that transition and if it's further into the street that could be a problem if it's more if it's closer to the property line it's not a big deal but we could end up with some streets and jagged and maybe that's just a staff staff working out and then in item c under the exemptions it ends with when located on a pedestrian corridor street i couldn't find that in the code tom pointed me to the c3 plan where it's at so maybe just an addition that points somebody in the right direction instead of having to go on the goose chase so those are just my comments but i, I think they're good and will be very helpful so. so my interpretation of item b is in terms of comply with sidewalk and landscape requirements is a sidewalk's needed landscaping is needed and exactly the cross section that is in the plan is no longer going to be built because you're just complying with sidewalk and landscaping so you need to work with staff in terms of the exact location of the sidewalk and the landscaping but for further continuation when your neighbor does it it seems to me like it should be with the street section in the form-based code so that 
the, the challenge with that is you're not requiring them to do the street cross section. And, and, and that's my and question. So it, it's, it's how do you interpret it? What what is the rule? Is it with just a general landscaping and sidewalk requirement, or is it with the court the street section, the sidewalks and landscape in the corridor development area? So questions. <laughs> To me, it's real straightforward. I, I don't, I don't see any question in my mind, okay. in terms of, if I was the engineer on a project, what I would propose. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of the item? Please step forward. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the item? Please step forward. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and ask for staff alternatives. So the alternatives you have before you are recommend approval of the ordinance that was also included in your packet, the draft ordinance, to the city council as presented. Find that it's not a it's not appropriate for the area and do not recommend the ordinance to the council or additional information and you need more time to study. Of course, another alternative that's not in your report could be if there's any changes to the ordinance um, out of the planning commission meeting, then those would need to be specifically identified before it got sent to the city council. Okay, any other questions for me? Okay, thank you for your consideration for this. We think this is a good move. Okay, thank you. Discussion? Well, I think obviously if, you know, our intent was to redevelop this area and if, if you know, the current uh, rules and codes aren't uh, letting it redevelop, then obviously it needs to be massaged. And I think this is probably a, a good start or, or maybe the remedy for that, so. I'm, I'm in favor. Um, I've read through it, and based on my past experience, this seems very logical. Seems to be uh, a standard right thing that we use in code and other things. That if you're painting the building, you don't have to bring up the code. But if you do significant remodeling, you have to bring up the code. In this particular case, uh, if you're doing maintenance activities on your building and you're not changing the use significantly, you don't have to do this, but if you're changing the use, we have two steps. One, where you just have to do this sidewalk and landscape, and the other is to bring it all up. So it seems, it seems logical to me, and I don't personally think we need any changes to language here. So I'll move to accept fines and recommend the City Council approve Ordinance 3396 as presented. Second. It is moved and seconded that we accept uh, staff's finding and the recommend the uh, to approve the ordinance at 3396 as presented. All will vote. Uh, wow. You've got to give me a chance to, to i got to say all that stuff. <laughs> um, the motion passes four to zero. Um, so one moment. Uh, the next uh, item for business is approval of the meeting summary of our regular meeting, February 6, 2018. Motion to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the meeting summary of February 6, 2018. The motion passes four to zero. Miscellaneous items for staff for discussion. Um, do we have a presentation of commercial activities and housing tarts 2016 2017? From Tom Coots with Development Services. Um, Basically, every year I, I take and put together a PowerPoint to kind of highlight the latest developments in the city. I don't believe we did this presentation for you all last year, so um, this will bring, should bring you up to speed. But uh, So this is to highlight the commercial projects, the latest things that we are have come online recently or when is going to be coming online in Stillwater um, from 2016 and, and 2017. So this is the map of the city. Uh, the, the blue dots represent uh, new restaurants. <coughs> the uh, pink dots would represent new retail shopping. The green dots is gonna be uh, housing, apartments, things like that. And the orange dots are just other. And uh, you can see the, I think uh, one very important thing to notice from what continues to happen in Stillwater is that the, a good majority of the dots are clustered in the center of town, the core part of Stillwater. Majority of, st of development is redevelopment and infill development. 
a lot less so uh, stuff on the edges of the city. And it continues to be that way. So just to highlight some of the new restaurant and shopping opportunities, uh, we've had uh, quite a few new restaurants coming to town, generally kind of replacing uh, other establishments. Um, but we've just, just fairly recently, we've enjoyed the opening of Raising Cane's, Five Guys Burgers and Fries, Sam Southern Eatery, two new Wendy's restaurants here in town, the Del Rancho. Um, Kim's Vietnamese is, is gearing up to go into a space. We're formerly in a, in a food truck. And um, uh, Golden Chick just recently opened, and uh, quite a few places. A new bar on the, on the Strip just opened up. Um, on, the re on the retail side, uh, of course, Academy, that happened. Um, it was just, just barely um, a little over the, the two years mark, but the, the, the area in general, then the Walmart neighborhood market opened and the gas station. So that area is, is still pretty new. Uh, the Atwoods expanded. Um, and then we, uh, the, the Stillwater Feed Mills uh, opened up a new store. And um, we have going to have a new, uh, hopefully a new O'Reilly is located out on the west side of town. Also, they've turned in a building permit and is, is under review. Um, on the housing side, we've had uh, quite a lot of uh, multifamily housing. Of course, the two major um, apartment developments in the form-based code area, the Avid Square, and, and the other one is... Um, mid midtown i can't i can't remember exactly but uh they've they've got to do branding for for the for the building and then uh the fraternities and sororities they seem to be on a uh, fairly steady pace of uh rebuilding their part their buildings um basically one or two a year or uh, as one gets gets new and gets done another one comes in to to rebuild so fairly steady and um there's been kind of a new player in the uh, student housing market kind of near to the campus. They've actually, when you add it all up, they, they've kind of slowly been doing a lot of work. They, they brand themselves under Presley Housing, but it's, um, it's uh, Taylor Sokolowski. Um, most of this, you haven't uh, actually seen a lot of his developments because he's been doing it under the, 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 under the zoning, so they haven't had to come here for approvals, but there have actually uh, been some significant developments near the, near the campus. By them, and then our um, the housing in subdivisions. The the primary home builder in Stillwater remains to be Ideal Homes. And then on the other side, uh, last year we had quite a few hotels come online, and still have the Spring Hill Suites is under construction and should be con completed this year. The OSU Foundation is uh, doing a major expansion. Of course, Oklahoma State University, as always, doing a lot of major developments. Um, Stillwater Public Schools, have, as you may remember, are proposing to rebuild the Westwood Elementary School. And uh, Stillwater Medical Center, uh, kind of interesting at the main campus. You know, a couple years ago we were talking about the south um, campus off of 12th Avenue, but at the main campus off of 6th, they're undergoing a um, steady re, re, uh, renovation. It will result in a substantial expansion of the, the buildings and services off, offered on the 6th Avenue property. And uh, in the last two years, we've had, of course, the, the air service start at the airport, and that has uh, ballooned beyond expe expectations. And uh, we had a new, of note, we had a new um, kind of a social services. Uh, have been some new social services in Stillwater, and that we have the our daily bread, uh, basically food bank, and the uh, the adult teen challenge facility just south of town provide some services. Uh, then downtown, as always, the downtown is uh, always changing. Um, we have a, a new new bar getting ready to open up, the Toonstone Saloon and Cafe. Uh, we've had a new bookstore open up downtown, new coffee store, or coffee shop. Uh, a new uh, business called, a, it's called Coworking. It's called Work at Co Coworking. And basically what that is, is, is um, it's kind of a shared workspace. For individuals instead of having your own office say you're a one one person office you just kind of uh, you have a desk in this area and, and have access to everything you need to operate your business and uh, there is some interesting development in the downtown and that with um, there's been a lot of discussion about the, the block 34 which is this vacant block next to the community center about what to do with, with that property and that has spurred a lot of additional discussion amongst uh, the community center and uh, 
there's been kind of a partnership formed called the Downtown Stillwater Cultural District, which is snowballing into hopefully become something nice and uh, very nice for downtown in that uh, there's some partnerships with uh, Oklahoma State University with the Museum of Art, which is also in, in that area, and the City of Stillwater, the Community Center, and there's an art gallery downtown in the Sherar History Museum to kind of create a, a cultural district um, and uh, as that builds on itself to um, increase the what what there is to do downtown. So we'll add it all together, add it all up. The highlighted projects add up to 21 din new dining establishments, 19 new retail establishments, 14 new housing developments, and 22 just other. Um, <laughs> so then, uh, when it comes to single-family housing, where where is housing being built? The each dot represents a building permit that was issued just in 2017. There's 101 total building permits that does not include, there are some building permits for the ranch. They have uh, several um, independent living houses and I didn't consider that to be quite the same thing as what we're looking at here. So these numbers will be different from what you see in other reports, but 101 outside of the ranch development. And so uh, most of the new housing um, construction you can see is kind of clustered in to a few uh, subdivisions that have some, had some remaining lots a lot of that is ideal homes with uh, the Traden Heights and the canyons and um, a few other locations. But one thing it's kind of of note is that uh, there hasn't been, you, you may remember we've, we've done a preliminary plat, but that one actually was so long ago that that preliminary plat now is expired. And so there hasn't been much in um, adding new lots to the supply for building houses, but there's been continued, um, continued to be a lot of houses built in Stillwater. And so um, I think we're going to start seeing, um, going to need to start seeing an uptick in preliminary plats and things like that to prepare for the new areas to start building houses as the old inventory that was um, platted many years ago uh, continues to be built upon. So this is the residential permit, permits issued since 2001, just to give you an idea of where things are now in relation to the past. Uh, you can see that residential construction compared to the recent past is still strong, a little less than last year, but still still in line with um, the last couple of years. Not nearly as much as during the, the crazy housing years back in the mid-2000s. But uh, And then commercial projects, um, it is significantly less than last year uh, of what we've issued. And this is these values are basically the, the value of the commercial construction and adjusted for inflation since the year 2000. And um, so, as I said, significantly less than last year, but I, I, as I said the last couple of years, the amount of development that we were seeing was um, not, not expected to continue forever. And so, uh, yeah, so yes, this year is a bit of a decrease from last year, and I would expect the next year also maybe a decrease from this year. It just judged purely on how much new projects we're seeing come in. But still, it's still a lot of development compared to a lot of Stillwater's past, including the uh, extreme boom years of 2006 through 2008. That's when people considered to be Stillwater to be growing the fastest. And so we're still definitely at par with, with even our fastest years. We just had some, some very busy years just recently. So uh, that's what I have. Do you have any questions for me? No, I just wanted to make a note that I appreciate you always bringing this to us. It's it's kind of neat, neat to see it in this PowerPoint presentation, you know, and uh, really gives us a good overview and definitely appreciate your time and effort on it. Thank you. Thanks. There was some, uh, a while back, there was some discussion about trying to do some things to kickstart development out to the west, you know, particularly commercially out west over by the, what I call the west side Walmart, that side. Has anything, have you seen anything come of, of that, at least uh, in terms of the, the interest out there, or is that a little, I mean, there's, you know, just just speculated, but it's is, I think, I believe you're referring to there is an establishment of a TIF tax increment financing district to serve the west part of Stillwater. To date, no development has come in to take advantage of that. Um, and as you can see from from the map of uh, where water is developing, there there hasn't, really been very much commercial development out on the west side of Stillwater still. The FFO opened up there. We have had the, the Bourbon Street Square development is, is new and it is significant. Um, and
the, that it is an interesting thing. There's going to be uh, some restaurants out there, and as you said, the Furniture Factory Outlet, and then Spring Hill Suites is under construction out there, and there's still uh, two or three more spots available. Look like Wilson Chevrolet is doing a new building there at Country Club and Six. Yes, so. a new showroom. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Our next planning commission meeting will be March 2018. We have a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adjourn. All of the motion fails. Four to zero. Thank you all very much for being here this evening. Thank mm -hmm. you.